guys, my name is Anne, and I got an idea in the middle of the night about testing the pH of different shampoos. Um, so I'm going to do a little experiment. I have a bunch of options to test, and we are going to be testing some luxury brands, some professional brands, what I'm calling popular brands, and dollar store brands. And basically, the point is to see what brings you closest to your hair's natural pH where it's supposed to be. So I have my pH scale up here. I have a couple things on top for reference. So all the way at zero, that's the most acidic. We have our battery acid. Um, seven is going to be neutral, so that's water. And then 14 is going to be the most alkaline, so we have that a drain cleaner. Obviously, both ends of the scale, very extreme. We have hair right here between a 4.5 and a 5.5 on the pH scale, so it's a little bit acidic. So there are a couple other things up here just for reference. I'm not going to go through all of them, but it just kind of gives us a balance. So the reason that this is important this is a diagram of your hair. It has three separate parts. In the middle, there's something called the medulla. We're not really going to worry about that. Not everyone even has one. Um, but you have kind of your main hair strand. That's going to be the cortex. And then on the outside, there's the cuticle. The cuticle can either be raised or laying flat down. When it's raised, that's your damaged hair. Um, it can't hold color. The molecules basically just fall out. You get a dull look with split ends because those aren't reflecting light well when they're open like that. The hair is going to be weak and more prone to breakage. Where if your hair is healthy, the cuticle is sealed down, the color is sealed inside the cuticle, it's shiny, smooth, it's going to reflect a lot more light, you're not going to have frizz, and the hair is strong and resistant to breakage. When you bring your hair over here into the alkaline area, you are opening it up more and making it more susceptible to damage. So in general, we're going to want things to stay, to bring our hair back to this sweet spot between 4.5 and 5.5 on the pH scale. I did a lot of research before doing this because basically what they teach you in hair school is just what the pH is and that you want to maintain that and not a whole lot more. So I looked it up and there was a study done by the National Center for Biotechnology Information. Sounds legit. And this is what they found. They tested 123 shampoos. They broke it into two categories, non-professional and professional. Um, and basically what they found is that all shampoos are between a 3.5 and a 9 on the scale. Children's shampoos are going to be rated a 7 just because they, they want that to have that neutral pH so if it gets in a child's eyes, it doesn't burn. So they found that the majority of the non-professional brands were over here above 5.5 and that the professional brands tended to be more below the 5.5. So that's kind of the types of results that I was expecting, but I'm going a little bit more in depth they have professional and non-professional. I do as well, but I've gone above professional into the luxury category and below the non-professional, the popular, into the dollar store brands. What I expect from this is that most of these professional brands are going to keep your hair more in this sweet spot area and that these, the dollar store type brands, are gonna be around a seven because to make a bottle this big of shampoo and sell it for a dollar, you there has to be a lot of water in it. I actually don't expect them to be as bad on pH scale as some of these brands because these I think likely have more active ingredients in them because they are a little bit more expensive. Which goes to something that I tell my clients all the time you're going to get a much higher concentration of product in your professional brands, so you're using a lot less where these, there's so little active ingredients in them that you have to use like a whole handful and you go through it much faster. So this bottle of shampoo might last you a couple weeks where this one might last you a couple of months. 
So for today's brand in luxury, we have Kerastase and Purology. Kerastase is what we carry at Salaluca. That's what I encourage most of you to use. It is a little bit more expensive, but in my opinion, well worth it. We then have two Matrix shampoos and Redken. Great brands, professional, not quite the price tag of Kerastase and Purology. Still great brands, still brands I love. Um, and then we have Shimmer Lights. Um, for some reason, this seems to be a super popular shampoo. I have heard bad things, but to be honest, I've never really used it. So I'm excited to be able to back up the things I've heard with some science. We have an Ion Deep Conditioner. Ion is one of the popular brands at Sally's. I see people using that all the time. We have Argan Oil of Morocco. This is, we're getting into Walmart here. We have Garnier Fertis, Tresemme, and Pantene. These are the three brands that I hate the most in the world. Um, mostly because I think when you're getting brands like these, you are not expecting as much because of the price tag, where these brands are actually marketed to lead people to believe that they are good for your hair, which I believe I'm about to prove that they are not. And finally, we have our dollar store. We have our Suave VO5 Power Stick for her, which I is the only brand here that I've never heard of before today. I picked it because I feel like they have really good marketing and this looks like it would be really good for your hair. And then finally, we have Salon Selectives, which is a misleading name because I highly doubt that there's a salon anywhere on the planet that uses that shampoo. So I have my pH test paper here. Um, you can buy this online anywhere. I strongly encourage you guys to do these tests at home and find out what you're putting on your hair and your skin. I honestly think these are really cool and fun. So if you like this concept and you want to see me test the pH of more things, I would love to. Just leave a comment. Um, I would love to test color pH. I would love to test different types of treatments. There are all kinds of things. This is super fun. So if it's valuable to you, let me know and I will make more of these videos. Um, so these are my test strips. The solution has to be put in the middle of the paper and compared with this chart half a second later. As you can see, it's somewhat up for interpretation, but there are enough colors that I don't anticipate any result being more than maybe one off. So I think we're still gonna get a good sense of which shampoos are good, which shampoos are bad, so on. I'm using four colors. Blue is going to be luxury, green is going to be professional, orange is going to be popular, and red is going to be dollar. So that will help you see which category on the scale everything kind of generally falls into. Okay, time to test. I, this isn't a lab, it's not exact, but I want to get a good idea. So I kept somewhat similar amounts to the best of my eyeballs abilities of each product to water, um, because you do mix it with water, obviously, when you use it. I tried to just do the shampoo and it did not work with the test paper, but it does make more sense to use water because obviously your hair is wet when you put these products on. So here we go. So I realized partway through this test that I made a crucial mistake by having purple shampoo. Obviously that's gonna throw off the color of the test paper, so I'm not gonna be able to get an accurate pH reading. So I did have to throw out the Kerastase and the Shimmer Lights. All right, so results are in um, for the conditioners. As you can see, conditioners and shampoos are pretty similar. We have our professional in green, our popular in orange, and our um, value like dollar brands in red. The biggest surprise to me was Suave because Suave is over here at a six for shampoo and a five for conditioner which is right in the sweet spot of where you want to be for your hair. So that's pretty impressive to me. There are other things besides pH that go into formulating a shampoo. I'm not saying go put suave on your hair. I'm just saying their pH is pretty good. 
Honorable mention goes to Garnier Fertis for being the absolute worst pH conditioner. Um, they are at a 9, which is very alkaline, very far from your hair. Um, and this is sleek and shine fortifying for frizzy, dry, and unmanageable hair. Um, but what we learned earlier is that a pH that high is going to open up the cuticle of your hair, so it's actually going to make it more frizzy, more dry, and less manageable. So that marketing is a little off. So in conclusion, everything is a little bit all over the place, but in general, I'm seeing that the green, the professional brands, tends to be closer to the sweet spot of hair, where the orange, the popular brands, are kind of more in this neutral area in general. And the dollar store brands are kind of all over the place. I was not that surprised by that because I did predict that they would all be about a seven because they are all mostly water. So that didn't surprise me very much. But I feel like based on this, we can conclude that in general, professional shampoo is going to have a pH closer to your hair. It's not the only thing that goes into shampoo and conditioner and I would love to make more videos looking at other elements. If that's something you guys are interested in, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you want to see. Let me know if there are specific products that you want to see, but I'm happy with the results because they do follow my hypothesis and they also are very similar to the study that I cited earlier from actual scientists in actual labs who are probably following way more rules than I am.